let's talk about cutting techniques. Now, one of the things as we've learned tool operations, primary tools we learned right away is a spreader because in the past, we needed a spreader to pop doors, pop hinges, pop, pop latches, force them apart. Today's cutters can facilitate cutting these things, hinges and latches, very easily. However, let's think about how. How do we cut hardened things like hinges and latches? Is it, is it the same as cutting sheet metal? Is it the same as cutting a roof post? Because that's pretty much what we've practiced on in the past. We've cut roof posts to do a roof removal. Well, is it the same techniques? Now, one of the things we're going to show you, we're going to cut some hinges first. The primary thing with cutting hardened objects, hinges, latches, and maybe even some of the reinforcements you'll find in modern cars, you have to make sure, open your, open your cutter up very wide, make sure your cutter blades go completely around the object you're cutting. Now, the important thing is, say they do, each tip goes onto that hardened object. That is called side loading or tip loading. If we tip load even the most fantastic cutter that's out there on the market, that cutter will break. Cutters are not made to be side loaded in any way, shape, or form. The blades will break. So we need to make sure our blades go completely around what we're cutting. That will also facilitate, as the cutter works, it will pull that object into the most force that cutter will generate towards the back of the tool itself. Now, some of you might have experienced cutting these devices. Sometimes the, the cutter will twist and bend, especially when we go on to cutting sheet metal. One of the ways to facilitate that and make it a little bit easier for you, if it does start to twist in an unusual fashion, stop, open the cutter back up, flip it completely around so it's the opposite direction and try cutting it that, that way. One of the things that Mike stopped and did, he went back and picked out a hand tool, a cable cutter for this operation, and actually cut the wiring between the door and the body of the vehicle. The reason why we need to facilitate that today is because a lot of our body structure in vehicles, doors and roofs, will now have safety systems built into them. One of the things that we need to be concerned about is we need to make sure that wiring and such is severed with a hand tool because our hydraulic tools can produce a static charge. We don't want any kind of back surging from static into the wiring that has the potential to maybe set these devices off. However unlikely, it is a possibility that we didn't encounter a few years ago. We've talked about cutting hard objects, hinges and latches and some of the reinforcements in cars. Let's talk about cutting roof posts today. Now, again, we've done this a lot in the past. However, the same kind of techniques apply. Make sure your cutter is opened real wide as wide as it can go. Make sure it closes completely around and the blades are past the post as much as possible. Now before we even get to that point, we want to make sure when we're cutting roof posts that we come in and we pull the interior trim away. What we're looking for, remember side curtain airbags can be in vehicles today in any roof post. We want to make sure that we pull the trim away and take a look, good look, make sure there's no type of pressurized vessel in that roof post before we cut it. Now, the other point, we want to make sure we cut at a 90 degree angle so we minimize the side loading force on our tool blade. Now, the other part of this is sheet metal itself. One of the things that we're used to with some of the older cutters in the past, the, the way the blades are made. A lot of blades are made in curves so the tips come in almost like an earwig. The tips will penetrate and hold the cutter in place. Some of the newer cutters, though, almost have a U-shaped because they're designed to cut hardened objects. Those type of cutters sometimes are difficult to work with with sheet metal. The, the cutter will want to twist and turn because the sheet metal gets in between the blades. We have to watch this as we're cutting and facilitate that, make sure we try and keep as close to 90 degrees as possible. If it does start to move again, one of the techniques you can do to minimize that is stop open the cutter back up, flip the tool over, and try cutting it from the, op from the opposite direction. Now one of the things you need to remember 
with all tool operations, be it cutting or spreading, we need to make sure that we put a barrier in place between our patients and our tool work. Now, a piece of hard protection such as I have in my hands here, a nice Lexan teardrop shaped device will facilitate that real well. If it's flexible enough to get into tight places, it's the right type of shape to fit into tight places. But the important thing is it's shatter resistant. Because one of the things as we cut things today, especially hardened materials, we're going to have small pieces of debris that, that are going to fly. A tarp or a blanket isn't going to protect our patient all that well. The other part of this is as we cut things, we also want to make sure we cover them up with whatever edge protection that you have, be it duct tape, spent fire hose pieces, edge covers, or such like that. 